In this video, we'll be going over the different ways to set up your map based on your needs and images. To start, we're going to create a new page for your map. At the top of your screen, click on the blue page toolbar button. This is where all your pages and maps will go. Let's go to the left and click on the create new page button. A new white page will show up. You can change the name by clicking on the word untitled and typing in what you want to call it. We'll call this one new map. Hit enter. Now, before we can start adding images to our page, let's take a look at the page settings. Hover over your new page's thumbnail and click the gear icon in the bottom right hand corner. This brings up the settings for this page. By default, your page will be 1750 pixels by 1750 pixels. A perfect square. If the grid is turned on, this will have 25 rows and 25 columns, making each square in our grid 70 pixels. Now, if that sounds confusing, don't worry. This is just a good reference to have before beginning your map. Now, I actually know some of the maps I'll be showing you today are a little bit bigger than this, so I'll just adjust this part. Now, scroll down a little to the grid section. Some of the maps I'll be using have gray and green in them, so I'm going to change my grid to red, just so it stands out while I'm working. Depending on what type of map you're using, you might want to change this as well. Save settings. Now click on your new map thumbnail. Great! Now before we go any further, go to the toolbar in the top left hand corner. Hover over the layers icon, that's the second icon in the toolbar, and select the map and background layer. Having this layer selected ensures that anything we place on the tabletop moving forward will always be on this layer. And it doesn't risk being moved later on in the game. Now I'm going to be uploading maps directly from my computer. So let's get a little bit of information about those maps before we begin uploading. Now our first map seems pretty easy. It doesn't have a grid to line up and its dimensions are actually listed. Let's drag it to our tabletop and resize it. Great, it's uploaded, but it's kind of small. That's easy enough to resize. Since we have the dimensions, let's type those in. Right click on your image, go to advance and click set dimensions a pop-up will appear. Here you can set your image dimensions. Since we know our image dimensions are in pixels, we're going to go ahead and type those in below. Click set when you're done. Okay, now our map is the size the artist intended it to be. But that's a little bit too big for my game. Sometimes you'll resize artwork and it'll just be too big for your tabletop. Not a problem. You can resize your map by hand by clicking on your image and going to a corner or a sidewall and dragging the blue transform icons. Or you can use the Align to Grid feature. For this example, let's use the Align to Grid feature first. Right click on your map, hover over Advanced, and click Align to Grid. A pop-up will appear asking you to make a 3x3 box on the map you're using. Since I want my map smaller, I'll draw a slightly larger box and it'll adjust. If you're making a perfect square, make sure these numbers are the same. Now click Align to Grid. Great, that looks much better and way more manageable. It's good to note that the instant align to grid feature is exact to the pixel drawn. So a person's drawing accuracy will affect results. If your map has grid lines already in the image, we recommend using the next three methods for alignment. Okay, let's take a look at our second map. This is a great example because this image is actually set up for a grid and has no border. So its squares go right up to the edge. Now I say that because maps come in all different shapes and sizes. Depending on where you purchased your map, the easiest map to align to the grid are maps that have grid lines that account for their border. Some artists create their maps with the sole intention of it being used on a virtual tabletop and having them snap to a grid. So setting up these maps are way easier. A lot of maps purchased on the Roll20 Marketplace will even list how many squares are in each row or column. Now since our map has no border and the squares go right up to the edge, I can just count how many units in a row and in a column there are. In this case, 14 by 6. We can set this up really easy. All I have to do is drag and drop it onto the tabletop, right click on my image, go to advanced, set dimensions. Instead of using pixels, let's resize the map using units. Click the drop down and select unit. Next, we'll type in the units listed, 14 by 6. Click set. Great! Our image has resized to the right size, and since the item was set up for a grid, it snaps right in place. Let's check another scenario. Okay, our third image is a lot like our last image, but its grid doesn't go up to the edge, so I can't really count how many squares make up this map. No problem. Instead, we're going to get its dimensions. Right click on your image, and select Properties. Next, 
Click the Details tab. Now check the Dimensions property. This map is 2240 by 2520. I'm going to make a note of that. And I'm also going to add it to the image's name by clicking on the General tab and typing it in. Click OK. Now same as before, let's drag it onto the tabletop. Right click, go to Advanced, and select Set Dimensions. This time we're going to leave the drop down on pixels and type in the dimensions we looked up earlier. Click Set. Great! This image aligns to the grid. Now all those maps are pretty easy, but let's look at the next example. I made that one a little bit harder. This next scenario is great if you've gone through all those steps that I've shown you before and it still doesn't align. For this example, I've added a little border and resized our image to make it a little bit more difficult to set up. This can happen if you scanned in a map yourself or if the original creator of the map didn't optimize it for a virtual tabletop. Sometimes an artist might have optimized a map to be printed out more than being used on a virtual tabletop. I think I can get this one to work though. Okay, just like before, right click on your image, go to properties and click the details tab. Take note of that image dimensions. In our case, 2092 by 1397. I'm going to type that into the name just so I don't forget. Now drag and drop that map onto your tabletop. Great. Let's set those dimensions. Right click, hover over advanced and then set dimensions. Leave the drop down on pixels and type in your dimensions here. Click set. Now you'll notice my map doesn't line up perfectly. If we check the corners, we can see there's some extra space that's preventing the map from lining up when it snaps to the grid. To avoid snapping to the grid, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard when you're moving your image around. When you let go, it will not snap to the grid. It'll completely ignore it. There, I moved the image to the corner, but it still doesn't line up. This might mean the combination of the image's dimensions and the border has messed with the map size. This can happen a lot with found images and images not intended to be used on a virtual tabletop. No problem though, we can align to the grid by sight and by holding down Alt. First, hold down Alt and move your image in place so the first vertical line lines up with another vertical line on the grid. Great! Now, go to the opposite side of your map and while holding down Alt, begin to resize your map, stopping every once in a while to align that first line. Remember, while you rescale, one pixel off in that first box can mean 25 pixels off in the 25th box. So they really do add up. Great, this looks good. We're going to do the same thing for the height of the map. Hold down Alt and align that first horizontal grid line on your image with the grid line here. Go down to the opposite side, hold down Alt, and resize. Great. Since I know this is the right size, I'm going to hold down Alt and drag it to the top left corner, leaving space on the right and the bottom so I can resize the page like I talked about in the beginning of the tutorial. Just like in the beginning, go to the top right hand corner of your screen and click the blue page toolbar icon. Hover over the thumbnail for the page you've been working on and click the gear icon. I'm going to count how many squares I need to get rid of to line this thing up and subtract it from the page settings I already have. You don't have to do this for your map, but I like seeing mine a little tidier. Great. Now I'll scroll down a little and change my grid color to gray. Click Save. And there you have it. Four maps set up, all for my game. Have fun building the best map ever.